Do you have a child that's recently been diagnosed with ADHD or have you had a teacher at school? Draw your attention to the fact that your child is very busy, active, hyperactive. Have you taken it personally? Have you kind of reacted? So many times I have parents who come in to my office and are sent and referred for an assessment and I sense immediately that parents are on the back foot. Often the teacher has mentioned some symptoms that your child might have that are suggestive of ADHD. And for parents, you can see it's almost like an insult. It's a slap to the face. It feels like a complete stigma. And the worry and thought that your child could have something wrong that resembles ADHD. Well, I'm here to help you. And if you listen throughout the video and go through to the end, you will understand that this is really the starting point for help. The most important part of understanding any problem is understanding, to have a really deep understanding, whether it's a teacher, a child, or a parent. When children get into the teenage years and adolescence, it's so important for us to be able to communicate and help them understand what their problem is. So many times children are, have things done to them. They go to therapy, they ask to go to speech therapy, occupational therapy, extra lessons, and they have no idea why this is all happening. And as a result, there's a lot of confusion. And it's no wonder children themselves sometimes feel the stigma and the negative incoming fire. They feel like a square peg in a round hole. So from a parent's point of view, think very carefully about all these factors. And what I'd like to do is help us understand what in fact is the whole aspect about coping with the stigma of ADHD. Tired of battling other people's opinions. You know, learn how adults with this condition and children, you know, learn and cope with these problems and also discover the best time to tell people about this diagnosis. There's nothing shameful about having attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. You know, there shouldn't be such a problem because this is something that is so treatable. It is a very common problem. At least one or two children in every class in the country have a problem or have a child with this problem. And, you know, if society can talk about it, accept it, and I do find that I think with time, you know, over my years as a pediatrician, we're now starting to see parents that have been treated. And when I deal with children with ADHD, I have a sense that parents are connecting and actually getting help for themselves. When I assess children, I actually refer at least a couple of parents a week to professionals and specialists that deal with adults with ADHD. So it's an uncovering, an unmasking of problems. It's an amazing opportunity to help deal with a particular problem that's so treatable. There's so many things that we deal with in society and with health conditions that sometimes are very difficult to treat. So it's an only a, a pleasure for me to be able to help adults and uncover and demystify the stigma. So why should this carry a stigma? You know, despite evidence to the contrary, many people believe that ADHD is a problem of poor self-will, bad behavior, you know, just a bad egg, you know, a child that needs to be sorted out by their parents, poor discipline, or, you know, not eating the right thing, sugar, preservatives. These are nothing necessary to do with the problem. So I think society and other parents, they feel contempt. Maybe the teacher should be sorting the children out. Sometimes teachers feel contempt because they feel this is a problem the parents should be dealing with, with better discipline. So there's a lot of doubt and, de and a lot of poor information. It is a fundamentally a biological problem. So, you know, if a child had a disability, you know, had a hearing problem, eyesight problem, getting something to help for the ears or glasses, it's no different. ADHD is a difficulty thinking clearly, 
eyesight correction helps you see clearly. So there shouldn't be this kind of um, stigma that's surrounding a biological condition which needs particular help. What harm does um, ADHD cause? You know, there are obvious things like social problems in the workplace, discrimination. But the greatest harm comes from self-stigmatization, poor self-esteem. And that is what causes these internal uh, stereotypes. You know, a lot of individuals with ADHD do not want to believe they have this problem, let alone, you know, getting help. And if you don't believe there's a problem, how do you get help? And, you know, if a child understands these problems, they're more accepting, they're more, uh, they're more likely to take on board and embrace the kind of techniques and modification things that we need to do to help them. So another question is, who is most uh, affected by the stigmatization? You know, often this is a problem that society thinks of boys. They're busy, they're hyperactive. We don't think girls can have ADHD. So there's a huge uh, burden on women and girls who, when they do have these problems, are feel shameful. They feel like this is something that should not be happening to them. But the incidence, yes, it's true. There is a three to one ratio in the very early stages of school. By middle school, it's a, a one to two. And in adulthood, it's one to one and a half. So as we start to understand that girls can have ADHD, we will demystify this and remove the stigmatization. What should you do if you hear hurtful comments about ADHD? You know, don't be reactive. Try and help educate. Talk about the genetics. We've identified something like seven genes, the DRD4, the DAT1. There are particular medical tests that have been done with functional MRIs. This is not something that is a, um, a figment of someone's imagination. This is a worldwide recognized problem. When you help people understand that this is as much of a medical problem as something like diabetes or epilepsy, I think it starts to help people understand that, you know, if you have a medical problem, this is something that needs a medical solution. So what else can we do with ADHD to counteract these uh, stereotypes? Well, of course, you know, it's important to talk about it, talk about it positively. And I think society is getting round to this. You know, when there are, um, you know, role models like Michael Phelps, we've got, you know, um, sportsmen, comedians, you know, leaders of countries. You know, we understand that these are not things that, and it's not a condition that... Uh, is a foregone conclusion that you're not going to be successful. You can be successful. You can be very, very successful. In fact, in my practice, I would say the wealthiest people that I see in my practice have ADHD. They're entrepreneurs. They've got enormous energy, enormous commitment, excellent sports people, excellent leaders, excellent, they've got energy. The older they get, they have an amazing drive. So they're creative. So I think it's something that if we talk about it and there's, you know, just kind of interacting with a group like this on the Guy Little Mind site, it's a community that helps support each other to uncover and demystify and remove these stigmas. So what can parents do to help their children with ADHD? If you're a parent with a child with ADHD, make sure that they understand what ADHD means. Don't overburden them with information. If they ask for it, help them. But I think it's important when they understand that there's nothing wrong with them, that they have a medical issue that needs help and assistance. It can lead to a lot of buy-in. You know, when they are a bit older and they're not told about these problems, it can really kind of undermine your relationship with them. And it's probably an important thing to um, help children legitimize the problem. I've had children who 
have discussed with their friends the problem and help them understand that they have difficulty keeping their mind on their work. And, you know, when you share that, you talk about it, it helps unburden. And, uh, you know, one of the other last factors I'd like to talk about, how or when should you reveal the diagnosis to a child? And, I mean, this really is a dilemma. When should you kind of, dare I say, come out and tell whether you're an adult, you're an adolescent, or you're a parent with a child, sometimes it's secretive. You know, people are here, they don't want to tell the grandparents their child is on medication. They often tell me in case somebody comes in, a grandparent comes in with their child, please don't tell them. Because I think they, there is this generational attitude that children, everything can be solved with discipline. Only just recently I had a father who asked me whether he should be giving his child physical corporal punishment. I mean, you know, in 2021, that's illegal. And I mean, it really is so far removed from the real education of what should be done. And of course, you know, parents and employers, uh, teachers, do they need to know? Often when I do assessments, parents don't want the teacher to hear and know that their child has ADHD. So all these things, I think, need to be removed this mist of confusion and if you have any ideas as to how you feel and how you would like you know your child to know let me know I'd like to just kind of give you my perspective as how I would tell a child you know you would say to them the other children in the class that maybe wear glasses they have difficulty seeing the board they need extra help and that helps them see clearly you know, that medication for ADHD, it helps your brain. You know, focus, select, be more self-aware, have better memory, have met better commitment, motivation. It helps you think clearly. You just think differently. And with time, the more consistent they get help, the better things get. And you know, if you're at peace and you understand, it does help looking at it from a disability perspective. When you constantly have to blame your child and think it's a self, a self will that they are kind of resistant to doing the things they should do. So let us know if you have any further questions related to how should you tell your child that they have ADHD.